Uh, let me start with a very complex problem, which is your wedding guest list. So your wedding guest list is just the list of guests to your wedding, okay? which always starts with 6,000 people. And then you realize that you're not from an oligarchic family and you need to cut the numbers. So your fiance starts to interconnect those people in the list by common feature. My family, your family, my colleagues, our colleagues, drunks, <laughs> boring people, perverts. And in the end, she starts cutting all the classes that she doesn't like. And you get with 200 people from which you know like three. It doesn't matter. What she did was to represent 6,000 people on a different space. That space of char common characteristics to, um, but to cut the numbers. But each person can belong to more than one characteristic. And this is called the distributive representation. And it is very important to cut the numbers. Now, if you get the point, okay, if you get the point, let's think about the monkey in the savanna. So we have this monkey in the savanna, and the monkey has to understand the world that he lives in, right? So uh, let's try to understand how the monkey deals with the problem. So if you try to look at this set, this flat set, and divide the set in a, with a mesh of 10 by 10, and say that in each of the rectangles, we can have 10 different objects, that would mean that the total possible sets that the monkey had to learn right, was 10 raised to 12, with only these very, very small numbers. Okay. So what the monkey needs is a fiancé like yours. Okay. <laughs> the monkey needs to cut the numbers. So. We already know how to cut the numbers, is to interconnect objects by common features, right? So, okay. so we will start interconnecting these objects, right? So we start interconnecting by these common features, right? What is green, what is blue, what is in the sky, what is in the ground, Okay. And with that, right, we change the geometry of what we are seeing from this flat space that we had initially to something pretty much more complicated to our brain. Right? So we are just interconnecting these objects to reduce the numbers, to cut the numbers, and in the end, we get a geometry like this. This ball that we see here, we call it neuron. And actually, this is how an artificial intelligence algorithm works. Right? So I just rearrange the balls. And the main idea is that I have this infinite dimensional space. It was the set in front, the flat set in front of the monkey. And I just started interconnecting by common features. And I project this infinite dimensional space into a very low dimensional space. If you, I don't know if you ever thought on why do we have a brain, right? I don't know, but this looks like a very good reason, right? to cut the numbers. Now, the monkey get out of the savannah. By a lot of reasons, he decides that 
he has infinite needs. So he needs to develop mathematics and physics and all the other sciences to transform that flat world he sees to construct buildings and cars and theaters and whatever, right? And um, he start building society with economy, politics. He started interconnecting with all the other apes by making trades and communicating and cooperating. And now we have this explosion of interconnectivity that is generated by this infinite amount of needs that these new monkeys have. So there is this new universe that is created on the top of that universe that the monkey sees, where all things are interconnected. And you already know what interconnection does to the geometry in the numbers. So it changes the geometry and cuts the numbers. So the new geometry of the universe, of this universe, is something like this. It's not flat anymore. It's something like this. And we see this geometry in a lot of things related with this infinite growing of the universe, which in economics is called inflation. And what is the brain of the monkey going to do with a system like this? The only thing the brain of the monkey knows how to do it. She starts to interconnect the objects by common features to cut the numbers, right? The problem is this universe is already compressed. It's already interconnected, right? It doesn't need to be interconnected. So then the cutting numbers that the human, <laughs> the monkey brain is going to do is different from the reality, is different from the ones that is already done by nature. And this is where the mysteries of the interconnected world come up. So this is why you can get an economic prediction. This is why financial mathematics is a tragedy. This is why intellectual projections are a joke, because our brain itself cannot process it. Moreover, it's even worse than that. Remember that mathematics and physics and all the other sciences were made to transform the universe that the monkey sees. But it's not this universe. It's another one. So mathematics and physics stopped working. So statistics doesn't work. Calculus doesn't work. Statistical physics and thermodynamics do not work. Okay? So the problem with complexity is a bit worse than we thought in the beginning. Ah. So to make this was the bad thing. <laughs> now, the good things. One of the problems that I struggled more in my life, in my professional life at the company and university, was a special kind of universe that is called textual language, text, words, right? So when we think about words, all the words are interconnected between them, right? If you try to understand the meaning of a word, you can only do it with other words. And the word has the meaning that the surrounding words say it has to be, right? So it is a universe that is pretty much like the one we saw before with one small difference. And the one small difference is that there are no words in nature. All the things, all the interconnection that exists in words is built inside of them, right? Because we use it to communicate. And it is a product of the brain. Instead of the universe that we saw before, the problem was get 
the nature inside our brain. Now we have the opposite problem. We have the anti-brain. We have to put the system out of our brain. And one Czech guy from Google in 2013 published a one brilliant paper. And this paper is only published on archive and has 25,000 citations. And what the guy did was a method to discover what was the internal representation of language, since there is, must be an internal representation. I forgot to say, the textual language is cultural dependent. So we write with one way in one language, another writes in another way in another language, one's from the left to the right, the right to the right to the left, but the brains are all the same, right? So internally, there should be only one representation, right? Got it? So what he did was quite brilliant, okay? So what he did was to build a brain, so you can think of the right side, left side as the brain, and on the right side, the anti-brain. And what he did, what, what he does, is pick one word from the text and put it as the input of the brain. And then the surrounding words of that word, he put it on the anti-brain. Like saying, if I have this word getting in, what word would I get out? So the space on the left and the space on the right are the same. The only thing that changes is the space in the middle. And the space in the middle is a proxy to the internal representation of the text. The scheme is quite brilliant, actually. And what is interesting is that a bunch of the mystery of the interconnected world started to make sense using the same reasoning. And one of the, these mysteries was called the quantum n-body problem. And the quantum n-body problem is something that happens at the subatomic level when subatomic particles in, are interconnected one to the other. And if you imagine the amount of subatomic particles that are in our body, so you can imagine how the numbers that I told you can be really a curse. So we really need to cut the numbers, and the way to cut the numbers was to, was to well, let's make a brain and an anti-brain and join them together to get the internal representation. And the one thing that we found out, we humans found out, and this, this is still unmoving, is that this internal representation is called a wave function in quantum mechanics, something that we know for 80 years or more. Got it? So, when I so told you that most physics and mathematics would fail, I was not talking about things at an higher scale, an higher size scale as ours. So, we already knew, like 100 years ago, by the most brilliant piece of, of human reasoning, which is called the theory of general relativity, that the interconnectivity of bodies at large scales, like galaxies and black holes and planets, actually bends time and space. So we knew already that there was this kind of ch geometry changing at the scales much higher than, than ours. And also, from this solution of the quantum n body problem at the scale much lower than ours, that thing leaves us with the only fat space that exists is the one that is at our scale, the one that the monkey sees. 
That definitely makes sense because from the lower scales to the higher scales, all the things are interconnected. And that leaves to the ironic thing in all this talk is that the only thing that the brain of the monkey was good for is the only thing that is not real. It's an illusion. Thank you.